as I promised, I'm going to make another video uh, related to capacitors. Uh, many times when you have a capacitor, it's going to be charged. And they hold charge for a very, very long time. And so what happens is that you can destroy your meter, even if it's a multimeter. You can destroy it because the charge in here uh, uh, can greatly exceed the multimeter's ability uh, to survive. Uh, some of them will pop a fuse, but most of the time uh, you'll just damage your meter. And so I strongly recommend that you don't have to buy this a capacitor discharger. You can use a screwdriver or you can even use a, a probe uh, like in here where you can just cross the two. You, of course, will damage your nice little this, this are, uh, gold plated uh, uh, leads. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I wouldn't do it that way, but use a screwdriver or you can use uh, um, any metallic uh, object that will cross these two. Uh, oh, I got off the video here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, across the plus and minus. And as I mentioned, minus is the, on electrolytic capacitors. Uh, there is a, such a thing as a plus and minus. Minus is this stripe in here. Means there's a minus. And therefore, automatically, this other one is a, a plus. Okay. So, um, that's what this is. Uh, this is a capacitor that doesn't have plus or minus, okay? These type of a capacitors, uh, okay, they, they, it doesn't matter if it's plus here or if the plus is over here, okay? So is on like a ceramic one like this one in here as well, okay? Uh, so is these. These don't have a plus and minus. I'm sorry, I apologize. This one might have a plus and minus. No, it doesn't. This doesn't. Uh, this type of a capacitor doesn't have plus minus either. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, discharge it when you're using a digital capacitor discharger like this one. They're not very expensive, by the way. They are sold under many, many different brands, uh, and they can also measure uh, voltage from this port in here. Uh, which I would not use for that because it's, I don't think it's going to be precise enough. But I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, I'm charging here from this little power supply, which I've uh, shown several times, I think, in my videos. Uh, I just basically printed this part, the blue part, uh, added a switch on and off, uh, and I used Ryobi battery, 18 volt, uh, to power this. And then in here I can set how many volts I want. In this case I set 15 volts. And this is a pretty nice hefty capacitor, even though it's just 35 volts. Uh, it uh, you can do less, of course, than than what's uh, the maximum voltage uh, sustained voltage is. So now I'm going to unplug just a positive uh, lead, and then these are leads uh, that they do matter if you put it plus or minus. So in this case, I put it on a minus, and then watch what happens over here with this. Uh, it will measure. The yeah, just made a liar out of me. Now, what did I do wrong? <clears throat> I always prepare, and for some reason, it doesn't want to measure. Oh, that's because I forgot I didn't charge it. <laughs> that will do it. Okay, so I uh, apologize for that. So here I charged it, which doesn't take very long, by the way. And then, uh, as you can see, the voltage is dropping from 15 volts. And then it's going to keep discharging the capacitor until it's completely gone. And there's zero. So now this capacitor is completely discharged. I will demonstrate it one more time. I have over here 15 volts set on this little power supply. And I'm going to charge it, and it doesn't take very long. It just basically can charge and discharge at extremely high speeds. And there it goes. And there's zero. It's completely discharged. Okay? So uh, make sure that you discharge your capacitors before you use them. It doesn't matter if it's an electrolytic capacitor like this one or if it's a, a ceramic capacitor like this one or this one, those you have to discharge uh, if you don't want to uh, damage your meter, 
Okay? So that's all about discharging capacitors.